Okay. So another round of examples for section 4.5. Um, I'm going to do mostly setups for these rather than do full solutions just to sort of save a little time and to sort of um, get as many different ones up here as possible. So we will start with another classic. Fence problems are classics. Uh, other classics. It's the box problem. Um, so in this case, we'll start with sort of, a, a, you know, generic rectangular box. I, I have it as like a an eight by 12, but you could essentially do this for any size. So let's say, or no, I'm sorry, you're not starting with the box, you're starting with just like a, a rectangle, sheet of paper or cardboard or something. So we start with eight, <laughs> eight foot by 12 foot. I, I sort of spontaneously put units on there. This, this is gigantic. We'll just roll with it. So an eight foot by 12 foot rectangle. Let's say rectangular sheet of cardboard. Right. So here's our guy. So eight foot, 12 foot. Um, the move here, how this goes, is you then cut square corners out. So if you remove square, squares of the same size from each corner, the idea is that you can then essentially fold the box, fold these sort of shorter edges now up, and you'll create, you fold the cardboard and you'll create a three D box with a rectangular base. So open topped box essentially, right? So we get something kind of like this. Uh, the question is, so what are um, the dimensions, essentially like what are the size of the cuts that we need to make to maximize the volume of this box? So we're sort of creating this 3D box out of just a 2D giant piece of cardboard. Um, so what would the volume be? So so the volume in theory, right, is obviously like length by width by height. Um, what we have essentially is sort of generically we're cutting, again, squares out of the corners of the same size because these have to fold up and then they all have to sort of match. The X values will be sort of the length of the cut that we make. And those Xs, when we fold them up, essentially now become the height of the box. Right, so the height becomes our x value. The base is now a new rectangle. That rectangle is essentially started as an eight by 12, but now what's happening is you're taking an x out of each end. So this essentially becomes now, you know, 12. This is kind of light, let me, I hope this is showing up okay. This is 12 minus, two x's, right? x and x. And then the other dimension will be eight minus two x as well. That's a little light. I'm just gonna shift to a different marker for next time. Maybe I'll write over it. So that's 12 minus two x, you know, is our sort of width. Eight minus two x becomes our like length. Length and width here are kind of arbitrary. So the volume equation now 
in terms of the three dimensions, they're all actually now in terms of x, essentially, right, would be 12 minus 2x, sort of our width, times 8 minus 2x is our length, times our height, which would just be single x. Um, and so this would be 4, x on what interval? Great question. Um, right, what's the sort of maximum and minimum that the x could be? Well, so the limit here is going to be based on the shorter length. In this case, it would be the 8-foot side. The x's are going to come sort of from each end, and so they would sort of come and they would pinch together. That means the maximum, if you have an x on each side, they have to add to 8. The x here could run from 0 to 4 in this case. So we're sort of limited by the shorter side. The x is the sort of cuts we can make out are only as big as uh, essentially taking up the full side. This is, again, is probably going to be, you know, if, if we have it 0 and we don't make a cut at all, it's flat, the volume will be zero. If we cut all the way, then that dimension will be zeroed out and sort of the volume will also be zero. Um, so those endpoints are very unlikely to sort of give us a final answer, but that's okay. Um, to do the calculus, now you're pretty much set up. I, I'll, I'll clean this up, right? What I would say is don't do this as a triple chain rule. This just becomes a polynomial, right? If you like foil this out, multiply everything out, times x, so this volume equation becomes whatever 12 times 8 is, 96, 96x minus 16x times x, so minus 16x squared minus 24x times x, x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4x squared times x plus 4x cubed, right? And then, of course, that can combine to maybe even reorganize this, so 4x cubed minus 24 minus 16 is minus 40x squared plus 96x. You're good to go. So then your, your volume equation that you're trying to maximize is here, right? Take your derivative on your critical points. You're only going to use any points that show up between 0 and 4. This will end up being some sort of like polynomial, right? That you can then sort of factor and go from there to get your critical points. Let me see if I can squeeze one more example in here. So another example, a uh, sort of semi-classic, is this is circle and square from one piece of wire. So the idea is you have some sort of wire, let's say the whole length is, you know, 100 centimeters of wire. We're going to cut it into two pieces. So we'll cut. So that would give us essentially a cut that's length x. Another length would be just the full 100 minus the x that we cut out. Um, and then the idea is we're going to create um, two shapes. So with the X, we're going to create a circle. So then that we bend it into a circle. So that means, so here's our circle. Right, circles have perimeters, they have radiuses. And so the idea here is your perimeter of this circle is going to be length x, right? This is nothing. A perimeter of a circle is also 2 times pi times the radius. So we'll keep all these things in mind. Um, with the other piece of wire, we're going to create a square. And so the idea here is, so this is sort of length 100 minus x. So each side on this square would be 100 minus x divided by 4, right? And so the setup in this case, what we're going to be asking for is what are the cuts that give maximum and minimum to 
total area of our two shapes. So we can sort of do both a max and a min here. Um, the idea is there sort of a position where we can kind of cut to maximize the total area of these two figures. <gasps> is there a place to cut to sort of minimize the total area? So what we need is a total area formula. That means we need areas for both of these figures, and we'll just add them together. So the perimeter is x is 2 times pi times the radius. Area for a circle is pi times r squared, right? And so what I need then is what's the radius in terms of x? Well, if I divide by 2 pi, I can see pretty quickly the radius here should be x divided by 2 pi. So the area for my circle would be pi times x over 2 pi, kind of quantity squared. That would be pi times x squared over 4 pi squared. So that becomes x squared over 4 single pi. That would be my circle area. Square goes a little faster, right? The, the, the area for a square is just like side length squared. So the area for the square is just going to be this, you know, 100 minus x over 4. That would be for us, you know, 25 minus 1 quarter x, maybe. So 25 minus 1 quarter x squared. You could leave it as a fraction if you want. Either of those are legitimate. Um, the total area, then, if we sort of combine these two together... becomes the area of the circle plus the area of the square. And so that would be x squared over 4 pi. We can think of this as 1 over 4 pi times x squared plus sort of quantity 25 minus 1 quarter x squared, right? What's the interval? So this is for x on... Um, so what are the cuts? You could cut anywhere from zero to 100, right? Essentially, you could sort of do all of the, you could go anything from like, you just make a circle, would be x is 100, or you do the other side, x is zero, and then all you do is make a square. So all that stuff is in the mix. So zero to 100. Um, I'll go through the motions here also just to quickly get our derivative just because this looks a little intimidating, my suggestion here for a prime, right? So we said this is, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. So we said this is essentially one over four pi times x to the two. So I would call this essentially, you know, one over four pi times two x to the one. That would essentially be one over two pi times x. And then I would do the second one as a, a chain. You could foil it out. I think that's going to be a little more awkward. So 2 times 25 minus 1 quarter x to the 1 times the derivative of the inside would be times negative 1 quarter. So a little bit of work there to kind of go through and like clean that up. Um, but really, it's just a linear value. It's just going to be single x's. And so you're going to do just sort of moving everything around um, to do your algebra. You'll be on your way. So that's your derivative. You're, you're, in this case, going from 0 to 100. Obviously, depending on how long the wire is, you, you'll get slightly different values there. Um, but if you go through it for sort of any length, you'll sort of probably start to see a pattern as far as, you know, where would you cut to max and where would you cut to minimize. And that's the idea. So that's 4.5. Good luck on the homeworks. See you in class.